So, today we are going to continue our discussion on AVL trees. In particular, we are going to look at the insertion and deletion procedure in an AVL tree. So, we will begin with insertion. So, uh, we had started this discussion on insertion in the last class also. So, suppose I am trying to insert a node V into an AVL tree, right. So, actually what I am trying to do is insert a key, right. But so, what is the process of insertion in a binary search tree? First you find where the key is, right. You go to that place, you put the key there. Let us say the node in which I put the key is, uh, the node in which I put the key is V, okay. Now, this is something we had started uh, the discussion of. So, if as a consequence of this insertion, it does not remain an AVL tree, then that is because the height balance property is violated, yeah. And what are the nodes whose height could change as a result of this insertion, right. Which are the nodes whose heights could change? Recall we defined the height of a node as the height of the subtree rooted at that node, yeah. So, this is this large tree and somewhere below there I insert a particular node, yeah. So, which are the nodes whose heights could change? It could only be the ancestors of this particular node. Not because it is written here, but you should also understand why it is only ancestors, right? because it is only in the ancestors of that node would whose subtree has changed as a result of this insertion process. Right? For any other node, its subtree has not changed, it remains the same as before. So, the ancestors of this node, their heights might change and change it will only increase, right, because I have added a particular node. So, it is the ancestors of these nodes whose heights might increase as a consequence of this insertion. So, if the insertion caused the tree to become imbalanced or unbalanced, then some ancestor of this node V is the culprit, is the place where some one or more ancestors, right, where we have a height balance problem. Height balance problem means it will become height imbalance. So, height imbalance means one left subtree and right subtree, the difference in heights is more than a one. So, what are we going to do? We are going to essentially travel up the tree from this node V, travel up the tree which means just keep following paint, the parent pointer, yeah, till we identify the node Z which is unbalanced, right. So, I have said it as till we find the first node X whose grandparent is unbalanced, but you can also think of it as I find the node Z whose grandparent who which is unbalanced and X is its grandchild. Which grandchild? The grandchild that we traversed went through, the grandchild on the path, right, because a node can have many grandchildren, yeah. I will show you an example and this would be clearer and we will call Y the parent of X. So, Y is the parent of X and the child of Z then, right. So, suppose this was the situation we had, this was an avial tree, yeah and uh, I insert let us say 54 into this tree. So, 54 would come here, why? Because it is larger, smaller, larger, smaller and so it would come here, right. Now, if there is a problem, actually this tree is not height balanced anymore, this is not an avial tree anymore. So, if there is a problem, we said that the problem would be on one of these nodes. So, note that these are the only nodes whose heights have changed. Earlier this node had a height of a 0, now it is 1. This node had a height of 1, now it is 2 this node had a height of 2, now it is 3, this node had a height of 3, now it is 4, which is the first node on this path whose height has, which is now imbalanced. This Is this imbalanced? 50? No, difference of height is 1. This is imbalanced? Yes, right, difference of height is 2, this is 1, this is height 3, yeah. The height of no other node has changed, the height of this node has not changed. So, you understand why the heights of only these nodes on this path would change, right. So, this node will be Z, yeah, this node will be Z, X would be its grandchild on the path and the parent would be Y. So, X will be the grandchild of the Z one, it is not the animal integrator. Let us call that X is a node, Y is a node and Z is a node, yeah. So, X is the node here. 
Okay, everyone with me? So we travel up from here, we find the first place where the imbalance happens, let us call that z and x is the grandchild of z. Grandchild means parents, uh, sorry, child's child. So, child is y and its child is x. And now, we are going to rebalance this tree. So, to rebalance this tree, so we are going to in particular rebalance this subtree, subtree rooted at z. And we will do that by performing a rotation and this is what will happen after the rebalance. This is what the tree would look like. Okay? And what we are going to do uh, today is understand how we came up with this picture. Right? As you can see, I have only changed this subtree. Which subtree? This subtree. The one containing these six nodes, 48, 50, 54, 62, 78, 88. They are here, the six nodes, but organized in a manner now, so that this node is not height imbalanced anymore and neither is this node height imbalanced. <coughs> yes? We are going to understand this process today. Okay, so let us first understand what is a rotation. Right? In the previous slide, I used this term rotation. What does rotation mean? So, a rotation is a way of locally reorganizing a binary search tree. Okay? So, this is part of my binary search tree. This could be a huge tree. I just consider a part of it. Yeah? So, u is one node, v is its child. And these are some subtrees. This is the right subtree, right sub. Uh, this is the subtree rooted at the right child of u, this is the subtree rooted at the right child of v, this is the subtree rooted at the left child of u. This could be a null tree, no node or could be a huge tree, I do not care. Right? What do I know? Because it is a binary search tree, I know all the keys in T1 are less than the key in V. All the keys in T2 are more than the key in V keys in T2 are less than the key in U and keys in T3 are more than the keys in key in U. Right? This follows from the property of binary search tree. Yes? <coughs> okay. Now, what is the rotation step going to be? Okay. So, first what we are going to do is let us just forget these links. Okay. Let us just look at this and uh, now this is what a rotation does. Okay. So, what has happened? V has become the parent of u. Yeah, you want a replay of this? Okay. So in slow motion, right? So, it is sufficiently slow. Okay, that is what a rotation is. And we will put the links back now. Right? So, uh, what happened? What happened was V became a parent of U. The binary search tree property still holds by the way. Keys of T1 are less than V. Keys of T2 are more than V. So, they come here <coughs> and they are less than U. So, they come to the left of U. Right? So, it is still a binary search tree. But we have done some local reorganization. Right? And this will be very useful. We will see why. Right? So, T1 earlier was a left le to the left of V, it remains to the left of V. Yeah? T3 was to the right of U, if you remember, let us see. T3 was to the right of U, T1 was to the left of V, T2 was to the right of V. Right? So, T3 remains to the right of U, T1 remains to the left of V, but T2 moves from being to the right of V to the left of U. It is now the left child of U. Yeah? Everyone follows this, what a rotation is. Okay. Now, let us see how we will use these rotations to do our insertion. Okay? So, okay. so, suppose the insertion happens, so this is the tree, I have not drawn the links. Right, but it should be clear what the links are. Who can tell me what the links are? Y is a child of Z, X is a child of Y, these two are children of X, T3 is the right child of Y, 
and T4 is a right subtree of Z. Yeah? So, in the next few slides, you will see pictures without these links, but that is just to avoid the clutter. You sh it should be completely clear what the relationships are. Now, suppose I did an insertion in T1. and these are the x, y, z that we encountered in the procedure. So, maybe insertion happened somewhere in some leaf, we went up <coughs> along the path towards the root, the root is maybe somewhere here yeah? and uh, z was the first place at which we had an imbalance and so y was the child of z and x was the child of y on this path that we took. Any questions till this point? Right? I have taken this one picture, but it could also be different. Right? Y could have been the right child of Z, yeah? X could have been the left or the right child of Y. Right? So, there are how many different cases possible? 4. Y could be the left or the right child of Z and X could be the left or the right child of Y, 2 times 2, 4 different cases. So, I am looking at one particular case now that y is a left child of z and x is also a left child of y and the insertion happened here. So, the insertion happened here. So, let us say the height of T1, yeah, I am using this to denote the height of the particular thing, the height of T1, let us say or originally it was h and now because of the insertion it becomes h plus 1. Yeah. It cannot increase by more than a 1 right? because after all I am just adding one node. So, the in increase in height can be at most a 1. And so, let us say there was an increase in height. Yeah. So, there is an increase in height of this node x also, there is an increase in height of node y and there is also an increase in height of node z. Right? That is why z became an imbalance. Right? If there was no increase in height of y, then z would not become imbalanced. Right? If jo pehle y ki height thi, insertion ke baad abhi bhi wohi height hai, to z mein kahan se imbalance aya hoga, right? everything is the same as before. So, that means height of y has also increased and height of y has increased because height of x has increased right? and height of x has increased because height of t1 has increased and height of t1 let us say has increased from h to h plus 1. What can we say about the height of t2 now? What is the height of t2? Okay. So, x is balanced even after the insertion because z was the first node which was imbalanced. So, x was balanced after insertion. So, if x was balanced after insertion, agar iska height h plus 1 hai, so t2 ka height ya to h plus 2 hoga ya h plus 1 hoga ya h hoga. h plus 3 nahi ho sakta t2 ka height kyun? Kyunki waha x per imbalance ho jayega nahi to. Right? Or na h se kam ho sakta hai. Agar h minus 1 hai, to h plus 1 or h minus 1 mein do ka farak ho gaya. So, iska matla x par hi imbalance ho gaya. Par hamne ka x par imbalance nahi hua hai. Z pe hua hai sab se pahle imbalance. Chik hai? Everyone with me? So, height of T2 is one of these three. Which one? H. Okay. Can it be h plus 2? If it is h plus 2, then originally x is imbalanced because originally height of t1 was h. If this is h and this is h plus 2, then this was imbalanced even to begin with, but that is not the case, right? Originally it was an AVL tree. So, height of t2 cannot be h plus 2. Can it be h plus 1? Yes. If it is h plus 1, then height of x will not be increasing. Then height of x does not increase because this is h plus 1, then that means what was the height of x to begin with? h plus 2 and what is the height agar if the height of this increased from h to h plus 1 even then its height remains at h plus 2. The fact that the height of x has increased <coughs> implies that this cannot be h plus 1 because if this was h plus 1 then the height of x did not increase it remained what it was before h plus 2. Everyone follows this? So, this implies height of T2 cannot be H plus 1. So, it has to be H. So, height of T2 is H. 
if height of t2 is h and height of this has increased from h to h plus 1, then what about height of x? What was the original height of x? Original height was h plus 1 and now it has become h plus 2. Yes? Is this clear to everyone? So, the height of x has increased from h plus 1 to h plus 2. Right? Let us continue this argument. So, this is the picture so far. We have argued that the height of t1 has increased from h to h plus 1, the height of t2 is h and the height of x has increased from h plus 1 to h plus 2. What about the height of t3 now? Okay. So, once again since y remains balanced, the new height of x is h plus 2. So, and this is balanced, this is height balance. So, the height of t3 is h plus 3 or h plus 2 or h plus 1, one of these 3 because the difference in heights can only be 1. So, it is one of these 3. Now, if it is h plus 3, we are repeating the argument roughly. Yeah? If it is h plus 3, then that means y was originally imbalanced because original height of x was h plus 1. So, y is originally imbalanced. So, height of t3 cannot be h plus 3. If it is h plus 2, then that means that the height of y has not increased. right? Because if this was h plus 2, then the height of y that means originally was h plus 3 right? and abhi bhi wo h plus 3 hi rahi ki. So, a height of t3 cannot be h plus 2. So, height of t3 has to be h plus 1. Right? So, height of t3 is h plus 1. So, if height of t3 is h plus 1, what is the height of y now? So, originally it was h plus 2 because both of these guys were h plus 2, h plus 1. So, this was h plus 2 originally and now it's become h plus 3 so it's increased from h plus 2 to h plus 3 is this clear to everyone yeah now what about height of t4 note that z is imbalanced yeah the new height is h plus 3 of this guy so what should the height of t4 be or h plus 5 Initially, it was balanced. So, since z was balanced, z was balanced, so height of t4 is h plus 1 or h plus 2 or h plus 3. Right? Since this was originally h plus 2, this could only have been h plus 1, h plus 2 or h plus 3. And since it is now unbalanced, it cannot be h plus 2 or h plus 3, it has to be h plus 1. Yeah? So, this is h plus 1. Who is not following? If you have a question, please ask. Your face will not come on the television. You can ask a question. No? So, height of T4 is H plus 1. Yeah? So, what is the height of Z initially? H plus 3. H plus 3. This was originally H plus 2 this was h plus 1. So, this was h plus 3 originally. yeah. And now of course, its height becomes h plus 4, but now we will do some rotation and stuff like that. So, that we will reduce its height. So, its original height was h plus 3. Yeah, everyone follows this. Good. So, we will keep this picture. Right. So, uh, this is what we argued. Let me quickly, this is the final thing we argued, right? These are the heights of the various things. So, when I say from here to here, this the first thing is what it was originally and what it is now. So, we just need to look at the new values. Okay. Now, we are going to do a rotation around this pair y z. So, what does rotation do? rotation is going to rotate this. So, that y is now going to become the parent of z. Yes? Yeah? Is that clear to everyone? 
So, what do we want to do? We want to we want to move this up so that it will come here and y will become the parent of z. Yeah? And point? Yeah, so this is what the rotation is. So let me just draw it here. So y will now become the parent of z. Yes? And where will I put these two? So this this is one subtree, this remains as it is, this will not be changed. Yeah? So, T3 and T4 are the only ones which have to be, so T4 recalls will remain at the right, T3 will come to the left and this big piece will remain as it is. Yes? That is what the rotation was, so let us just. this is what will happen. Yeah. So, y is become the parent of z, these two are the children of z, t4 and t3 and this entire thing was to the left. Is this clear? Again, I have not shown the links, but it should be clear what the links are. Yeah. And I have written down the heights. The height of this was h plus 1, this was h, this was h plus 1, this was h plus 1, h plus 1, h, h plus 1, h plus 1. Yeah. As a rotation, after a rotation, we already saw that the binary search tree properties are maintained. So, this is still a binary search tree. But now we want to argue that the height balance property is also restored. Pe height balance nahi ho tha. Kahan pe, where was the height ba imbalance happening? On z, z. As you can see, this has height h plus 3, this has height h plus 1. So, this is a height imbalance z. Now, let us see what is the height of node x now? Yeah, because this is h plus 1, this is h. What is the height of node z? h plus 2. What is the height of node y? h plus 3. Is everything balanced now? This is balanced. There is only a difference of height of 1, this is balanced, no difference, this is balanced, no difference. So, we have done a rotation, this is called a single rotation, you will soon see why it is called a single rotation. How much time does this operation take? Just one rotation? Right, we just have to do some constant number of operations, right. We have to maybe, why, why we will have to, you know, z will have to become a child of y. So, there will be three or four different reference changes that you have to do, maybe 5, maybe 6, some constant number, independent of the number of nodes in the graph, in the tree. Okay? Now, one interesting thing has happened. The original height of z was h plus 3. Yes? That is why we had written this h plus 3 here. After this rotation, the height of this subtree is also h plus 3. Yes? whatever was the original height of this is the new height of this subtree also. So, the height of the subtree remains same the same after the rotation, remains the same as in what was whatever was the height before the insertion even, h plus 3 was the height before the insertion. Yeah. So, after we inserted and did the rotation, the new height also becomes h plus 3. Why is this important? Yeah, because now I do not have to go up further. Yeah, because now any ancestor of this, its height would not change anymore because I have whatever was the original height of this h plus 3 of this node is the new height of this subtree also. So, any of the ancestors of z, their heights would become the same as before, and so there will be no imbalance on them. Right? So, as I am marching up after I did my insertion, as I went started moving up, I find the first place where was there was an imbalance. I did the rotation yeah, and I am done. I do not have to go up any further. But is this going to hold always? Let us see. So, we have actually considered only one case, one out of four different cases. Yes. Why one case? Because we said 
y is a left child of z and x is a left child of y. Now, there is one symmetric case which is a symmetric both are right 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 that I am not going to handle because I trust all of you can believe me there that it is a symmetric case completely right. So, the other case is this one yeah where x is let us say a right child of y which is a left child of z ok. This has a symmetric case which is that y is a right child of z and x is a left child of y again that is completely symmetric and we will not handle that ok. Okay. So, let us repeat the argument that we had. So, once again I am assuming that the insertion happens here right it could happen in any one of these, but again it uh, it is symmetric let us assume it happens here. So, this height went from h to h plus 1 what about the height of this guy right. So, since this is balanced even after the insertion the new height so the height of this is either h plus 2 or h plus 1 or h if it is h plus 2 then that means x was originally imbalanced if it is h plus 1 then that means that the height of x is not changed. So, it has to be h yeah I am repeating the arguments it is the same as before yeah. So, if this is h and the new height is h plus 1 so what is the new height of x h plus 2 and what was the original height h plus 1. So, its height moved from h plus 1 to h plus 2. Now, let us look at the height of t 1. Well, since y is still balanced then that means that the height of t 1 is either h plus 3 or h plus 2 or h plus 1 right. Now, if it is h plus 3 then that means y was originally not balanced. If it was h plus 2 then y height has not increased. So, it has to be h plus 1 which means y's height has increased from h plus 2 to h plus 3 which means that now since z is imbalanced the height of t 4 has to be h plus 1, h plus 1. Yeah? which implies that z's original height was h plus 3 yeah exactly the same as before we have not made any reference yeah okay but now the rotations will have to be different a bit Okay, which of these three keys so in x, y and z which of these three keys is the middle key x, 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 y or z which of these is middle x, x. z is the largest. largest y is the smallest right. So, if you recall in the previous rotation we had x, y and z again there in the previous rotation which was the middle key y, y. y because they were all in a line. Yeah. So, z was the top y was its left child. So, which means z y is less than z and x was its left child. So, x is less than y is less than z. So, after the rotation we ended up making y the root the middle child we the middle key we ended up making the root here also we would want to do something similar, but except that the middle key is now x. Okay. So, we are going to do a two step rotation that is why it is called a double rotation. So, first I will rotate x y. Okay. Let us see what will happen after I rotate x y this is what will look it will look like x has moved up y has moved down t 1 remains the left child of y t 3 remains the right subtree of x and t 2 switches loyalties from x to y. So, earlier it was the left subtree of x now it is the right subtree of y and t 4 remains as it is yes everyone with me and I have just copied the same height. So, t 1 has height h plus 1, t 2 has height h plus 1, t 3 has height h, t 4 has height h plus 1 no difference. Is this balanced? Is this height balanced? Height of y is h plus 2 yeah because both of these have height h plus 1. Height of x will be h plus 3 actually now there is an imbalance at x itself. Yeah, because this has h plus 2 and this has h. So, there is an imbalance here and height of z would be h plus 4 because this is height h plus 3 one more right. So, this rotation has not done the job for us yet yeah. 
So we need to do one more rotation. What other rotation do I need to do? Rotation XZ. Yeah. So what will happen now? X will go up and Z will come down. X will become the parent of Z. T4 was the right subtree of Z, so it will remain the right subtree. Y had T1 and T2 as its left, they will remain as they are. And T3, which was the right subtree of X, now becomes the left subtree of Z. The same thing. Yeah? Okay, now let us compute heights. Height of Y? H plus 2. Height of Z? H plus 2. Height of X? H plus 3. Height balance happens? Yeah, this is balanced here, it is balanced here, height is balanced here. Furthermore, the height of this subtree is the same as the height of the original <coughs> subtree we had, H plus 3. Right? So, final tree has the same height as original tree, hence we need not go further up the tree. Everyone follows what is happening. You understand the need for a double rotation here. Right? We ended up doing the same thing. As I said, the middle key ended up being at the top because we want to be able to split the thing uniformly now. Yeah? Why was the height here, imbal why was the height imbalance happening? Because, you know, this was the middle key, it was coming way down. Right? Now, when I kind of split uniformly, the heights reduce and there is a height balance. That is roughly what is happening here. How much time does a double rotation take? Constant time. Yeah? Okay, everyone with me? So, so just as a quick recap, we we have four different ways to rotate nodes in an AVL tree. So the single rotations were something like this, right? They were all in a line, x, y, and z, or they were like this, x, y, and z, right? And after rotation, this is the picture you get, and here after rotation, this is the picture you get, right? This is just as a recap you understood why we are doing this thing and why this picture is a balanced picture, a height balanced picture. And we also saw double rotations. So, either like this, in which case, you know, after rotation you got something like this and or it could be like this, left and right, in which case again after rotation you got something like that. Yeah, this is just to show you the picture, you do not have to understand much here, you have hopefully understood why the single and ro double rotations are done in the way they are done. Okay. So, now let us come to deletion because exactly the same principles are going to be used for deletion also. It is a binary tree. Uh, the difference between the height does it become 0? Uh, we saw that, right? Did we see that? Let us see. Here it became here it became 0 at this node, but not at this node. Here the difference, sorry, here it is 0, but at this node the difference is a 1. Right? On some nodes there would be a difference of a 1, there would some other nodes there would be a difference of a 0. Okay. So, now let us look at deletion. So, in a binary search tree, when I delete a node, we had three cases, if you remember, right? When I am deleting a node which is a leaf, or I am deleting a node which has only one child, or I am deleting a node which has two children. When I delete a node which has two children, what did I do? I went to the successor of that node. I copied the content of the successor into that node and I deleted the successor. So, the actual node I deleted was the successor node and the successor node has only one child or no children. Why does the successor have only one child? Because it does not have a left child, because if it had a left child then it would not be the successor. So, it has only one child or it has no children. So, the actual node that you end up deleting is either a leaf node or a node with only one child. <coughs> right? Everyone agrees? This is the actual node that you ended up deleting. 
Okay. Now, what is a node which has only one child? In an avial tree, if I tell you, here is a node which has only one child, what can you say about that node? So, this is a node with only one child, right? Can it have another child? Can this node have a child? No. If it had a child like this, then what would be the problem? There would be a height imbalance here. So, it cannot have this child or it cannot have this child. So, which means this node is a leaf, exactly. So, if in an avial tree, a node has only one child, then the child is a leaf. So, if an in avial tree, a, if a node has only one child, then that child is a leaf. Yeah. So, what are we saying? I am either deleting a leaf, when I am deleting in an avial tree, I am either deleting a leaf or I am deleting the parent of a leaf. If I am deleting a node with only one child, then it is the parent of a leaf. Yes. So, which means that I am essentially deleting a leaf. If I am deleting the parent of a leaf, then I am essentially, you know, what am I doing? I am just, I can think of it as if I was deleting the leaf and copying the content of the leaf into the parent. So, I am, I can always think of it as if I am deleting a leaf. Yeah. So, I am either deleting a leaf or a parent. Let us just keep that in mind. Okay. So, let us, let us say W is the node that we are deleting. Okay. Now, we are going to define our x, y and z slightly differently. Right. So, z is once again the first unbalanced node that we encounter as we go up from w towards the root. Right. When I deleted w, once again what is going to happen? The ancestors of w, their height could reduce. Right. So, on one of this, one of these ancestors will be unbalanced. If they, if any are unbalanced, then one of these will be unbalanced. So, let us say Z is the first unbalanced node encountered while we are traveling up the tree from W. Okay. Now, Y is not the child of Z on the path, but we are defining Y as the child of Z with larger height and X is the child of Y with larger height. Okay. Z has two children. One of them has let one of them has a larger height than the other one. Yeah. So we take that one. So once again we will perform rotations to restore the balance of the the height balance of the subtree rooted at z. Now, what is going to happen here is that this rotation now we are doing. So, in the case of insertion, what was happening is that once we did this rotation, we do not did not have to worry anymore on the ancestor nodes, right? Everything was taken care of. We could stop after doing the rotation. Now, in delete, what we are going to see is that we might have to continue up and we will see what the reason for that is. Right? So, you might have to continue up the tree, go to the ancestor of z and once again find the first node which is unbalanced and repeat the rotation there and after that go even further up, find the first node which is unbalanced, repeat the rotation there and so on till you reach the root. Okay. So, let us understand what is happening. Yeah. Yes. Sir, you are saying that X is the child of Y with larger height, uh, but Y is not imbalanced, they, they, both the children might have the same height. You are saying? Z is the, Y is the child, X is the child of Y with larger height. Yeah, yeah. if both of them have the same height, then uh, we will we will say which, which, which of them should be X, we will say that in a minute, right. It could happen, so his, his is a valid question. Both the children of Y might have the same height, so then which is X? We will see which is x. Okay. So, the same implies for y also. No, the two children of z cannot have the same height because that is the imbalanced node. 
right? Okay. Uh, ignore these h minus one or h minus two for a minute. They should not. They should have come at the end. So this is the picture. I have z, which is the first unbalanced node. Y is the child of z, which has higher larger height, and x is the child of y, which has larger height. Right? And I did a deletion in T4. Let's say I did a deletion in T4. I started going up the tree. I found a z. Yeah, I found a z. Y was uh, okay. Can y be? Hmm. So valid question. Can y be this node here? No, because height of y will decrease. It cannot increase. It can never. Can never be height of any. Node in the tree in which you are deleting will decrease. Right. So the height of this, if 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 y was here, then its height would have actually decreased, right? So uh, so what's the problem? So y can never be on this side. Be balanced. Be on the other side. And you're choosing y to be the larger, so it cannot be the one which has decreased. Okay. Yeah. So um, did everyone follow what he was saying? Let's see. So, question is, why did I draw y to be this? So, I, so my w is somewhere here. The node I deleted is somewhere here, right? I said, I started walking up this, and I came here, and this was the first node I identified, which had an imbalance, right? And then what did I say? Let me take. So, this node has two children. This is one child of z, and the other child of z is this one. I said, let us take the child of z which has larger height. Why could it not have been this node which has larger height? Sir, because it is, if it is h plus one initially, it has produced two h or o. Right. So this is very simple actually. There is an imbalance that happened here. Earlier there was no imbalance. Imbalance happened because this decreased. The height of this guy decreased. Yes. So, if there are two things which are balanced, right? If there are two things which are balanced and one of them decreased, yes, then what can we say about the relationship between these two things initially? Could it have been, could this have been smaller than this? No, because if this was smaller than this, then actually they will become more balanced now. So, this must have been larger than this for imbalance to have happened, right? So, this is why, therefore. Okay. So the height of T4 has reduced from H to H minus 1, let us say. What can I say about the what can I say about the height of Y? H plus 1. H plus 1. Yeah? Everyone with me on this? So, why? Because originally, so it is h minus 1 now, right? So, it, this means that this must be h plus 1 or h plus 2. It cannot be h plus 2 because then originally also it was unbalanced. It cannot be h minus 3 kind of a thing because then initially it was unbalanced. So, it has to be h plus 1. So, height of y is h plus 1. Okay. Now, x is the no, the two of, of the two of these, x is the one which has larger height. So, what is the height of h. H. so height of x is h? Yeah. What can I say about the height of t3? It can be h, h, or h, or h, can be h. Or h so since this is y is balanced, so this can be h or h minus one. Yeah, because y is balanced. Okay. Good. I uh, will take these y, these are this in the next slide. right? So, this is what we have argued so far. This goes from h to h minus 1, this is h plus 2, this is h plus 1, h, h or h minus 1. right? So, this is height is h. So, one of them 
and this is also balanced right. So, the heights of these two are h minus 1 or h minus 2? h minus 1 1 has to have a height of h minus 1. So, both cannot have a height of h minus 2 that is the only thing we can say. Both can have a height of h minus 1. So, you cannot say that only one can have a height of h minus 1 that is a wrong statement at least one has a height of h minus 1. So, let us do a rotation now to see what needs to be done. So, these are the various heights that we have seen yes this is what we argued in the on the last two slides. Okay, now, uh, what kind of a rotation should I do? I will do a rotation y z once again, Yeah, similar to what I did in my insertion. So, as a consequence, you will have this kind of a picture now, yes, y went up, z went down, t 4 and t 3 became the two children of z and t 1 and t 2 are the children of x. I have written down the heights h minus 1 or h minus 2, h minus 1 or h minus 2, h or h minus 1 and h minus 1 Yeah, because t 4 went from h to h minus 1. So, this is h minus 1. What is the height of x now? This is h minus 1 or h minus 2, this is h minus 1 or h minus 2, but one of them is at least h minus 1. So, x is h. What is height of z? H or H plus 1. So, what is the height of Y? H plus 1 or H plus 2. What was the original height of this tree? H plus 2. So, if this is H plus 2, then we are ok. We do not have to continue, but if this is H plus 1, then we may have to continue, because this now becomes the bigger tree. देखिए जैसे मैंने यहां पे माना कि इसकी हाइट h2 h minus 1 गई थी अब इस पूरे की हाइट h plus 2 to h plus 1 गई होगी तो वी विल हैव टू कंटिन्यू द आर्गुमेंट एज वी गो अप एवरीवन फॉलोस दिस या द वे वी सेड इसकी हाइट हैज रिड्यूस फ्रॉम h2 h minus 1 नाउ वी माइट हैव टू से दैट दिस बिगर थिंग की हाइट हैज रिड्यूस फ्रॉम h plus 2 to h plus 1 and we will have to repeat the argument at the next higher level and so on. Good. So, after rotation height of subtree might be one less than original height. In that case, we have to continue up the tree. Might be, you understand might, yeah? Because it could not have reduced, in which case we can just stop. So, this is single rotation. In the case when this was the picture y was a left child of z and x was a left child of y. But we could have this kind of a picture that x is a right child of y. Yes. So, the first part of the argument is the same. This has gone from h to h minus 1. So, we argued that the height of y is what was it? h plus 1. So, height of y is h plus 1 and height of y is height of x is h because <coughs> x is the one which has larger height and height of z is h plus 2 because height of y is h plus 1 yeah and this is height h or, or h minus 1 good. Now, how about the height of t 1? So, y is balanced. So, height of t 1 is either h or h minus 1. Now, if height of t 1 was h, then what I would do is, I would pick the root of t 1 as x, right. So, so it will in that case, I will be able to do that single rotation of mine, the previous case. If the height of this is x and the uh, of this is h and the height of this is also h, right. The same thing that question that he had asked earlier, then which do we pick? Now, which one will I pick? I will pick the one which will give me the single rotation case, right. I cannot say I will pick the left child or the right child. I will pick the left child if y is a left child of z. If y were a right child of z, then I will pick the right child, yeah. So, therefore, since such was not the case, height of t 1, if it were h, then I would have picked it, picked x as the root of a, t 1. So, height of t 1 is 
h minus 1 height of t1 is h minus 1 yeah and uh, since the height of this is h these are the same as before h minus 1 or h minus 2 for both of them with one of them at least being h minus 1 so this is our new picture now okay so let me just copy it here these are what the heights of the various nodes and trees are okay now let's do the double rotation step so first i'm going to rotate as before xy the same process as an insertion essentially so with the rotation of xy y will come down x will move up i would get such a picture t3 is the right child of x now t1 and t2 are the two children of y left and the right sub child sub trees of y this is h minus 1 this is h minus 1 or h minus 2 this is h minus 1 or h minus 2 this is h minus 1 okay now what are the heights of these nodes height of y is h what about height of x h plus 1, h plus 1. and there could be an imbalance at x if this were h minus 2 and height of z is h plus 2 because this is h plus 1 and there is an imbalance at this node so there could be here there is here there is none here yeah but we are not done so we'll we'll now do a rotation around xz yes and now what would be happen x moves up z moves down t3 and t4 become the two children of z t3 has height h minus 1 or h minus 2 t4 has height h minus 1 this is the height of t4 and this is the height of t3 this is the height of t2 h minus 1 or h minus 2 t1 ki height h minus 1 what about the height of y now h. h is it balanced yes this is h minus 1 this is h minus 1 or h minus 2 what is the height of z h, h. is it balanced yes h minus 1 and h minus 1 or h minus 2 what is the height of x now h plus 1 it is also balanced but this height is now strictly one less than this so is case mein to aapko move karna hi padega there is no might this time Okay, why did I require, why did I make that argument ki iski height h minus 1 hai na ki h? Haan, we could have done single rotation, but I have to invoke that single rotation and all that thing. Single rotation gives a. If you have h, then you can see what you can do. T1 ki height h. h plus 1. h. h. Yeah. t अब ये this can be imbalanced अगर ये h minus 2 है तो ये h है और ये h minus 2 है तो इतनी मेहनत करी मैंने और कोई काम नहीं हुआ right यहीं पे imbalance अभी भी रह गया तो इसके लिए I require कि ये height h नहीं हो सकती और कैसे नहीं हो सकती इसके लिए मैंने क्या argument निकाला कि अगर इसकी height h है तो हम single rotation वाले case में चले जाएंगे तो हम उसको इसके root को x pick करेंगे you understand why? Why I had to make this kind of an argument? Why did I have to say that its its height h nahi hai? Good. So hopefully you all understand this. Any questions? Right. So what has happened is final tree has height less than original tree. We need to continue up the tree. Right? You understand the need for continuing up this because the height has reduced by 1. As a consequence, there could still be imbalance at the ancestors. Ancestors of this, no, whatever is this node in Kansas. The next one will suffice means uh, after the, the first ancestor of Z, checking at that one will. No. If, if, does not, if there does not occur an imbalance on the next one, yeah. then it won't, have, it won't occur anywhere up the tree. That's not clear. So, the suppose the there is an uh, Z one is the parent of Z. Right. If there does not occur an imbalance because of this right. uh, decrease in height, yeah. then it won't occur anywhere above. Right. Okay, this will require a proof even if it is correct, right? So, think about it, it is a good question. He is asking me if 
you know whether we can just be satisfied by checking the parent of this node right so think about this and we'll we'll answer it maybe in the next class maybe after the class okay so let's quickly look at what the running time of insert and delete are okay so for insertion we spent login time in finding where to insert why login height of the tree we actually spent time proportional to the height of the tree which is the height we argued in the last class is login so we spent login time coming down then we spent login time maybe moving up at most login right because that's the height and then we spent constant time in doing a rotation and one rotation and we are done so the entire thing is only login and in deletion um, recall that in insertion what we said was that you will first find the node in the binary search tree where the insertion has to be done you will insert the node then you will start moving up the tree to find the place where the imbalance occurs the first place and then at that place we said we will just do a rotation and with one rotation you will be able to satisfy the height balance property once again so insertion basically requires order login time to insert the node and you might have to spend order login time to move up and a constant time to do the rotation so in all it just takes order login time deletion on the other hand also requires only order login time but we need to do a little bit more work right the reason for that is that to delete a node recall that you have to identify which of those three cases the node is in as in whether the node you are deleting is a leaf node or if it has only one child or if it has two children then we need to find the successor of the node so we need to go right and go keep going left find the successor swap contents and then delete delete the successor node once you have deleted now you have to move up the tree to find the first place where imbalance occurs having found that you do a rotation that rotation may or may not solve your problem if it does not solve the problem of height balance it does not restore height balance then you might have to continue up from that from that node right and maybe once again perform a rotation if that solves the problem then you stop otherwise you will have to continue up so in all the number of rotations you might require is as large as the height of the tree right because with every rotation you are moving one level up so you might require as many as order log n rotations but each of those rotations is only taking a constant time so the total time required for all these rotations put together is only order log n and we took order log n time to delete the node all the rotations also took order log n time and so the total time required for the entire delete operation is still order log n right so with that we'll end today's class we saw how to do insertion and deletion in avl trees and we argued eventually that the total time taken for both insertion and deletion is only order log n yeah um, in the last class we had seen that the time taken for search is also only order log n in the case of an avl tree so all the three operations of insert search and delete can be done in log n time in a avl tree thank you